Good morning and welcome to the Friendship Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Reverend Carlton L. Phillips. We want to thank you for worshiping with us this Sunday morning, whether you are here in the sanctuary or you're joining us virtually. We want to thank you for coming. We pray that you won't leave like you came in Jesus' name. Now let the service begin. One more time. Because I guarantee you somebody laid down last night and they didn't get up this morning. So he's worthy to be praised. Our call of worship this morning going to come from First uh, Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the 13th verse. And now by faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Amen? Amen. Amen. We come to have a Holy Ghost good time in the name of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. So we want you to let go and let go. All right? If you if, if your belt too tight, go ahead on and loosen it up. Your shoes too tight, go ahead on and kick them off. Hey, I don't want nothing holding you back. I want you praising the Lord in spirit and in truth. So now we're going to turn you over to our minister of music and this wonderful choir. And they're going to take us to high heights and praise and worship. Every word of worship. Every word of worship. 
amen. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. We ought to be in one accord when we're praising the Lord. Amen. Amen. Everybody should be praising the Lord. Amen. God, our Savior. God, our healer. How many of you know he's a healing God? How many of you have been healed by God in here? When the doctor said you could not be healed, he said yes. Amen. That's why we praise him. Amen, amen, amen. Our scripture today comes from 1 John, the first chapter. 1 John, the first chapter. And we'll read verses 6 through 10. And it reads as so. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. May the Lord have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and the doers of his word. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are summoned here once again in your storehouse to be about your business. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have done. Lord, we, if we can just request back from last Sunday as your spirit came in your house and you used your pastor to preach. We ask, Lord, this request again today, Lord, let your spirit have its way. Speak to thy pastor. Lord, we need you now more than ever before. There's never a time that we don't need you. Have your way in your house. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today. We had nothing to do with it, but it was all about you. Have mercy on us. As they wear the red, Lord, it's not for a look. It's because of your son, Jesus. Every drop of blood that fell from his body was because of our sin. And because of that, we just want to thank you. Have mercy on us that you send him so we can have a way to get to heaven. He is the way. And there is no other way. You have made that clearly in the name of Jesus. Forgive us all of our sins. Everyone in here from the youngest to the oldest, mid age, older, baby, whatever we pray for, y'all portal to be healed in the name of Jesus. And Lord, thank you for saving little Laos. Was lost, didn't know the way, but I wasn't by myself. In Jesus, in the great holy name, in the one that died and rose with all power in his hand, we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen, to God. We do have a couple of announcements that we need to make this morning. Um couple of thank you cards to Deacon and Sister Anthony Burdell. Your thoughtfulness and kindness will always be remembered, Sister Emory and family. Thank you. Sometimes when life seems empty and we feel alone, we discover the importance of the kindness of others. Thank you for being a light in a dark and difficult time. Your kindness meant so very much and will never be forgotten. The family of Ms. M. Minnelli Nolan. Thank you. 
to all of you. The kindness shown, shown by each of you and the care through giving were very touching and are truly appreciated. Thank you, brother and sister McLester. Amen. We also have Can We Talk today. Uh, that's with our youth. And it's headed up by Sister Di and Reverend Jackson. So we're going to ask all our youth to go to the fellowship hall. We're going to ask all our youth to go to the fellowship hall. After song service. After song service. Amen. Behold you 
where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I gotta be where you are. I wanna be where you are. I wanna be. Gotta be where you are. See. Your presence, Lord. I want to be. Gotta be where you are. Oh, I want to be. Eternal God, we thank you. Lord, we praise you. We give you glory. We give you honor. Lord, we stand now at the threshold of preaching. If any good thing comes from it, oh God, we pray that you get the glory and not us ourselves. Lord, don't let us leave here the same way that we came. If these are the blessings, oh God, we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. And let every heart say together, Amen. Amen. I'm starting to get nervous. I don't preach unless old Woods is in the house. I would say, well, I'd say, well, I'd say, well, where is he? Where, where, where is going on? Something is wrong. Eh? <laughs> Turn with me to thank you all for those who tuned in on Thursday morning for prayer, those who came to Bible study. If you came to Bible study, raise your hand. Amen. We had a marvelous time in Bible study. Amen. We had a marvelous time to be back in Bible study together. Wednesdays, everybody say Wednesdays. Six o'clock. Amen. We had a marvelous time. And we petition each and every one of you who'd like to come and be a part of Bible study. Please, man, please, sir, come. Matthew chapter number 14. 
familiar passage of scripture, Matthew chapter number 14. Really familiar passage of scripture. I'm sure each and every one of us read it, heard it, regurgitated, recited it. Matthew chapter number 14. Starting at verse 14, it says, When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them and healed their sick. As evening approached, the disciples came to him and said, There's, This is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away <clears throat> so that they can go to villages and buy themselves some food. And Jesus replied, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. We have only the loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. We, ha we have here only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Bring them to me, he said. And he directed the people to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish and looking up to heaven. He gave thanks, broke the loaves. Then he gave the pieces to the disciples, and the disciples gave the pieces to the people. He gave, he, he looked up to heaven gave thanks, broke the loaves, gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the people. I want to talk for a few minutes on the subject, maximizing the moment. Maximizing the moment. My brothers and sisters, for this time that is ours to share together, pastor and people. The text for the morning is arguably one of the most recognizable passages of scripture in all of the Bible. Uh, it, it is probably one of the most recognizable passages that is contained, uh, that we refer to in the collections and writings that we call the Bible. I dare say this morning that most of us who are listening in this building or even uh, over the via the World Wide Web, we've heard it quoted in Vacation Bible School, BTU, Crusaders, Red Circle, somewhere along our life's journey. We've heard how Jesus took two fish and five barley loaves and how he fed a multitude. We remember this story, how he fed a multitude in a deserted place. But most theologians categorize this as probably the greatest miracle that Jesus ever performed. Most people don't like to talk about that, but most theologians categorize this feeding of the 5,000 as one of the greatest miracles that Jesus ever performed. They make this assertion based on the fact uh, that Jesus, uh, this particular miracle, has to be head and shoulders above other miracles. The first reason why, Reverend Lyles, they say that it's the greatest miracle is because it's recorded by multiple people. When you study this miracle, you'll discover that unlike the other miracles, all four gospel writers look at this time, at this place, and record this miracle in their narrative. No other miracle was recorded by the four writers, the three synoptic writers, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, all collaborated that this was a miracle of Jesus Christ. In fact, the only other story that all four gospel writers concur on is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What makes this miracle probably the greatest is not only the number of people who recorded it, but secondly, what makes it stand above head and, head and shoulders above every other miracle is how many people received this miracle. In fact, we don't even know how many people there were that day. In fact, we have no idea. We say 5,000, but the Bible says that they stopped counting at 5,000. The Bible is very clear that it was 5,000 men, not including women and children. What makes this miracle different than other miracles is how many people recorded it, how many people received it. And thirdly, thirdly, what it took for this miracle to happen, how small and meager the resources were. There's no other miracle recorded in the Bible that blessed so many people with such meager provisions. One writer surmises that Jesus had two sardines and five biscuits. 
And, and Reverend Hill, from those meager resources, he fed a multitude of people. But to me, Brother Dywood makes this miracle different than other miracles. It's not just the number of people who recorded it, the number of people who received it, the meager provisions that required it. To me, what makes the miracle stand out so much is the fact of how it related to Jesus Christ himself. If your Bible is still open, you'll know that this didn't just happen in happenstance. But this particular miracle happened on the wings of something else. This miracle takes place on the heels of a personal tragedy of Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's a tragedy that's happened in the life of Jesus Christ. You'll discover that just prior to the text and just prior to this miracle, Jesus has heard the news that his cousin, John the Baptist, has been beheaded by King Herod. And the Bible declares that upon hearing this news, Jesus wants to go to a deserted place so that he could grieve. He wanted to go to a place where he could be alone. He wanted to go to a place where he could think of memories, fond memories of he and his cousin. He wanted to grieve because, Sam, he is 100% man, 100% God. That's the human side of him. He wanted to grieve and be by himself and mourn the death of his cousin. But the Bible says that the crowd saw him. They started to pin in on him. And Jesus is now forced to put his pain on pause to provide for people who were hungry. Let me say that again. Jesus has now put his pain on pause and provide for people who are hungry. Jesus is grieving. Jesus is hurting. Jesus wants to be in solitude. He wants to be in a time of personal misery, but instead he, he has to put his pain on pause. Instead, he's pushed to perform a major miracle. And I stop there to put emphasis on that because the text teaches us that there are times where God will use our times of personal misery to birth a public ministry. There are times when God will use our pain as a platform to use to preach to others. Jesus, despite the fact, the fact that he was in pain, he presses the pause button on his pain and he still performs this miracle. I want to pause and mention parenthetically that if, that if you know exactly what you have to go through that, 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 that if people only knew exactly the things that you and I have to go through, uh, that, that just, just to do what we have to do on a daily basis, maybe people wouldn't be so critical of each other. Oftentimes, folks look, folks look at you and they don't, know, they don't know your story. They don't know your struggle. They don't know your pain. They don't know your hurt. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know what you're presently going through. Oh! they see is the fact that you can stand and do what you're supposed to do and you do it and it seems that you do it well. You stand and you are a good mother. You stand and you are a good father. You stand and you sing on cue. You perform at the best of your ability but they don't know what it takes in order for you to do what you do. I wish somebody I wish somebody here just for a moment would think back over your life and think about the times that God used you in spite of what you were going through. You know, church is funny. Church is funny. Let me pause by the curve. Church is funny because church folks come on Sunday morning. Yeah, yeah, church, yeah, okay. okay. Church folks come on Sunday morning and they, they want a word from the Lord. They, they want to hear their favorite man or woman of God, but they have no idea what that man or woman has had to go through just to stand at that moment. Oftentimes, church folk come and they want to hear a rousing sermon that will help them, but they have no idea what, has gone, what the man or woman of God has gone through to give them that word from God. And what the preacher oftentimes has to do is the same as what Jesus has to do, put our pain on pause, just to open our mouths and preach. To the people. That's what Jesus does. He puts his pain on Paul's and he performs this miracle. He maximizes this moment. And just for a moment, I'd like to argue this point from a different angle this morning. That the same thing Jesus does to maximize this moment on this day is the same thing he does to maximize your life. I, I know it sounds strange, but the same thing he does on this day with two fish and five loaves. It's the same thing he does for you every single day. Because truth of the matter is, God desires to maximize your life. 
God didn't just redeem you for nothing. God didn't just save you for nothing because he had nothing else to do. God didn't just send his son to die on the cross for you because he had nothing else going on that day. But rather, you've been redeemed for a reason. You've been picked for a purpose. God has chosen you for a task. God wants something better out of your life. God wants maximum glory from your experience. God wants your journey to be a journey of joy. God wants you to lead someone else to him. And the same thing he did on that day is the same thing he does for you and I. Y'all don't mind if I tell you just for a moment, do you? The first thing Jesus does is right there. It's plain, right there in the text. Same thing he does there is what he does for you and I. Look at what he does with that bread. The first thing he does is he blesses the bread. And I I wish I could find a profound way to say it, but that's, that's really what he does. He blesses the bread. The Bible says that he took two fish. And the loaves, he looked up to heaven and he blessed it. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I know that doesn't resonate with you. And you, you're you wondering why I'm putting so much emphasis on the fact that he blessed the bread. The reason why it is you're not walking with me is because you don't know what kind of bread this was. Matthew's account, Matthew's account doesn't go into detail, Reverend Hill, about what kind of bread it was. Matthew is not descriptive in regards to what kind of bread this was. But when you read uh, John chapter number 6, verse number 9, John is specific in telling you that this was not just bread, but this was barley bread. Now, that might not mean anything to you because you don't know what barley bread is. Barley bread is the cheapest bread you can buy. In fact, barley bread was poor folks' bread. Barley bread was the no-count bread. It was the no-quality bread. It was so low, in fact, that the Bible says that people used to feed their livestock, Deacon McLean, with barley bread. As a matter of fact, 1 Kings chapter number 4, verse number 22 tells us that Solomon had 40,000 stalls of horses, but Revelation verse 46 tells us that he fed those horses with barley. So barley was not just any bread, but it was such bad quality bread that farmers used to use it to feed to animals. But here is the shout. Here's a shout of the morning. The Bible says that God took that same no count low bread, the same low bread, and he looked up to heaven and blessed it. You're not shouting. You're not shouting because you still think I'm talking about bread. But the truth of the matter is, is I'm looking at some bad bread this morning. I am some bad bread this morning. I'm looking at some low budget bread this morning. I'm looking at some things and some people who people counted you out. I'm looking at somebody. If you would be honest, you weren't as always as good as you are right now. You hadn't always been in church like you. You didn't always get church text messages on your phone. And the truth of the matter is, you ought to be thanking God that God still decides to bless bad stuff. The word blessed here, see, the word blessed here, the word blessed here, verse number 19. Verse number 19, the word blessed here is the Greek word eulogio. Eulogio, it's where we get our English word eulogy. Okay? So when a funeral is going on, his or her, her, their eulogy is preached by a preacher. And that, that, that simply means it simply means to speak well of. So that's what Jesus did. Eulogio, he eulogized, in other words, the bread. He took the fish and the loaves, he looked up to heaven and he eulogized the bread. He said something good about something that was bad. And can I give you a reason why you ought to be shouting? I I, I don't care. I, I, I stop really caring about what people think of me. I, I'm starting, I'm starting not to care what people say about me. But I got a heavenly father and that, that looks at me, and no matter how bad I am, he can say something good about me. If you want I want to know why I come to church and why I lift my hands and why I got a smile on my face, why I got joy in my heart. It's because I got somebody who sees good in me. There ought to be somebody here who can look at your neighbor. You ought to tell them smile because somebody's smiling on you. Somebody loves you. Somebody speaks good of you. Let, let, me, let, me, let me go a little further. He blessed the bread. He blessed the bread. The reason for it is why I put emphasis on it it's because I'm wise enough to know that what God blesses. Woods, what God blesses, no man can curse. And see, let me tell you why, let me, let me tell you why you're, you're, you're looking at me strange. Because right now you got some people who probably despise the ground you walk on. 
You probably don't know who they are, but then again, maybe you do. That's your business. You got folk plotting and planning your demise. You got folk who smile in your face but looking for the, a soft spot to stick the knife in your back. You got people who pat you on the back, huh, but really they despise and look for a ditch to put you in. Yeah, but here's the shout. Whenever the Lord blesses you, no man can curse what God has blessed. He will bless you in the city. He'll bless you in the field. He'll bless your going out. He'll bless your coming in. He died. I thank God that he blesses bad bread. Yeah. See, here's the thing. Minister Grant, here's, here's the thing. The bread didn't ask to be blessed. Mm -mm. The, the, the bread didn't come that day. It didn't just show up expecting to be blessed. The bread just happened to be there. The vehicle by which it was there, we know, was a small boy. Uh, we know it as a lad's lunch. And Jesus used his prerogative to bless the bread anyway. And because the bread didn't ask to be blessed, the Lord chose to bless the bread. And the bread really didn't, doesn't, huh, because it didn't ask to be blessed, it really doesn't owe huh, an explanation as to why Jesus decided to use it the way he used it. You remember, it's bad bread. But, 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 but this bad bread, the Lord chose to bless it anyhow. Some of us spend all of our time trying to figure out why we're so bad, but a good God keeps on blessing us in good ways. You spend all, you spend a little bit too much time trying to, try, try, trying to justify why you're so bad, but a good God keeps on I don't know why he keeps blessing. I don't know why he keeps waking me up in the morning. I don't know why he keeps a roof over my head. I don't know why he keeps my family safe. I don't know why he blesses me and doesn't bless someone else. I don't know why he keeps on blessing me over and over again. I don't know why he keeps on blessing bad bread, but I'm so glad that he does. Yeah. Well, okay. He blessed the bread. But y'all know what happens next. Same bread, same bread that he blessed. The Bible says that he broke it. Um, the blessing is, even though the bread was blessed in his hand, Reverend Hill, in his same hands, the blessed, the blessed bread was broken. Yeah. And I don't care how blessed you are. Brokenness is somewhere in your future. Brokenness is somewhere in your future. But the shout is, here's a shout, here's a shout. Even though blessed bread was broken, it was blessed before it was broken. Y'all ain't feel me. Y'all feel me. I got, I got to emphasize that. Y'all ain't feel me. Blessed bread was broken. But here's a shout. It was blessed before it was broken. Y'all ain't feeling me. Let me see if I can. Let me see. I'm trying to explain to you why you went through cancer, but you still look good. Because you were blessed. trying to explain to you why you lost your job but you hadn't missed a meal and your bills are still paid because you were blessed before you were brought. I'm trying to explain to you how you lost friends but you didn't lose your mind. It's because you were blessed before you were broken. I'm trying to explain how people can look at you and you don't look like what you've been through. It's because you were blessed before you were I'm trying to explain how you can survive everything the enemy threw at you and you can still wave your hands. You can still have joy. You can still have a smile on your face. It's because you were blessed before you were broken. Here, 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 here. See, we shot off it, but here's how I got that woods. Here, 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 here's, here, here's how I got that woods. Here's how I got that. Uh, it was blessed before it was broken. Because it says when he broke the bread. It, 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 in the Greek in the Greek way, syntax of the sentence, the word broken is in the aortic tense. No, that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't seem, I know, I know, I know. It's in, it, it's in the aortic tense. It, it, it's a, it, it means something that happened in a specific span of time. Okay, here's the shot. Not only, not only, 
did he know how to break the bread. He knows when. Aren't you glad this morning? Aren't you glad, brother, this morning that he didn't break you a long time, that he chose? Now, if I'm sitting here and he's breaking me now, I'm glad he broke me now that I'm saved. I'm glad he didn't break me when I was in the world. I'm glad he didn't break me six months ago or a year ago or five years ago. I'm glad he didn't break me when my heart couldn't take it, when I would have lost my mind, when I would have been cuckoo for cocoa. But he had to break me, but I'm glad he knows when to break me. Aren't you glad? My daddy, you said that way. Aren't you glad? Well, you ought to be glad. That he decided and he knew when to break you. He, break, he broke you once you got saved. He broke you when you got anointed. He broke you while you could still keep your right mind. He broke you when you were still. He could have broke you while you were still in the club, while you were still out in the world. But the Lord has such impeccable timing that he waited until you could handle being broken. Text says he blessed it. He broke it. Yeah, can I tell you what also blesses me about this particular passage? That, 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 that look whose hands this same bread could have been in. Look at all the hands that handle the bread. Yeah, 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 yeah feel me? Look, look how many hands handle the bread. First of all, the lady who packed the lunch for the boy. Her hands handled the bread. The leaders who searched for the boy, who grabbed the lunch, their hands handled the bread. The lad whose lunch it was, his hands handled the bread. But I'm so glad that the lady, the leaders, and even the lad, nobody could break it quite like Jesus could. Because it went from the lady, it went from the leaders, it went from the lads, but now it got to the Lord. And when it gets to the Lord's hand, the Lord knows just how to break it. The Lord knows just what he's doing. And, I, and I'm shouting, I'm shouting this morning, I'm trying to hold my hope, I'm shouting this morning because just anybody's hands couldn't handle the bread. Anybody's hands couldn't handle it. Uh, let me tell y'all, okay, you know, I, Woods, Woods, people, people often wonder why Woods and I have such a strange relationship because he reminds me a whole lot of my daddy. My daddy was a short man in stature. But if you heard him walking and talking, you think he was seven feet tall. You know, by the time Tommy, I, I had graduated, I, I was I, I was the baby of five. They didn't have problems out of me like they had out of my siblings. I didn't talk back to teachers as much. I didn't <laughs> I didn't cut school as much. <laughs> Sister Glenda, I didn't I didn't I didn't I didn't I, I didn't fight. As I, I, I didn't do what my other brothers and sisters did. And the reason is because it didn't take one time, one time, one time, one time, one time. In the eighth grade, I remember I had just started the way I was doing lifting weights. I was playing ball. And I really thought, I really thought, I, yeah, yeah. They called daddy and I said, that's not, that's not, that's not bad. He, it'll be all right. He came in the county truck. With the shades like Dwayne Wayne, Dwayne, uh, Dwayne Wayne used to wear on on uh, a different world, the flip downs, hole in his back pocket of the jeans, his Orange County Public Schools T-shirt on, and he got out of the truck looking mad because he didn't like to be called off from where he came into the classroom and before the teacher could even tell him and what I did, I heard the loudest slap. I couldn't even feel it anymore; it was so loud across my face, and I just saw white. 
Now y'all can't, y'all can't say nothing about him now because he's he going on the glory. But, 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 you know, so I went through the rest of my high school career wood fearing that my daddy would put his hand on me. Daddy gone now. He died in 2016. I stood and eulogized him. My fear now is not that he'll put his hands on me, but I got a heavenly father. My fear now is that he'll take his hands off me. Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou would draw thyself from me, whether shall I get or be somebody here this morning who thanks God that you got a God who keeps his hands on you. person has a hand on me. Well, okay, 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 I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished, I'm finished. I'm sorry I held you all this long, but the Bible says they looked up to heaven, he blessed the bread, he broke it, but then Sam says he gave it to the disciples. And the verse number 19 says the disciples gave it to the multitude. Okay, let me tell y'all what shouts me. Lee, Lee, this, this, this is shout, this is kicker. He gave it to the disciples. The disciples gave it out to everybody else. Let me ask you this. As blessed and broken as the bread was, what good would it have been had it stayed in Jesus' hands? The broken bread had to be given out to broken people. If Jesus hadn't given it out, these people could have died. They would have suffered. They would have surely died of hunger. So broken bread had to leave. There, there, there was no Walmart. There was no, 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 no. There was no Publix. There, 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 there was no Win Dixie. There was no CVS. There was no place where these people could get provisions. They're in a deserted place. So if those five thousand plus people. We're going to be fed. Jesus could not have kept broken pieces. What he had to do is he had to bestow broken pieces upon broken disciples who then had to give it out to broken people. Because if he does not give broken pieces out, those people would go hungry. Yeah, I, 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 know, I know you're looking at me strange right now, but Jesus had to break the bread and he had to give those broken pieces out because too many people were counting on broken bread. Y'all didn't feel me. Too, too, too many folk needed broken bread. It's not ideal. It's not the best. It's broken, but too many folk are there hungry. They needed broken bread. Can I explain to you this morning why the Lord had to break the Lord has to break you sometimes because he, there's somebody around you that needs you when you're broken. There's somebody in your office, somebody in your family, somebody that's a co-worker, somebody on your phone, somebody in your circle. You don't want to be broken, but somebody needs the broken you because the broken you is not just for you. The broken you is not just because of you. The broken you, the broken you is given out to broken people. And I'll be the first one to admit nobody likes to be broken. Huh, let, me, let me be transparent. I, 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 it's embarrassing to be broken. Yeah, if you got a broken home, a broken relationship, broken marriage, broken partnership, it's embarrassing, especially when you're a public person, to be broken, broken finances. I, sometimes I go through some, some things and I hang my head down. I want to hide in the closet. The way I don't want to come out in front of anybody. I don't want to preach anymore. I don't want to lead anymore. I certainly don't want to tell anybody how good God is. But then the Spirit of the Lord always convicts me and lets me know that somebody needs to know that God can break you, but he can also put you back together again. And there ought to be somebody here this morning that I thank God he broke me, but he'll put me back together again. He broke me, but when I get back, when he puts me back together again, I'll be stronger. I'll be wiser. I'll be better, I'll be loved better, I'll 
I'll sing better. I'll preach better. I'll serve better. Please. Uh, come on, be a preacher on your pew. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, please. Uh, be patient with me. God. God. Uh, is not through with me. And, uh, he broke me. But hey. Uh, Put you back together again. Yeah. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Anybody been broken? Look at your neighbor. Tell him I've been broken. I've been down to my last. I've been broken in the pieces. But God will. God Get back together again. can't appreciate this part everybody can't appreciate this part because you might be broken right now you may be feeling God breaking you right now God knows I'm there myself but you ought to look at your neighbor you ought to look at him right now and smile and say neighbor I know I'm not like Humpty Dumpty they're going to put me back together again and I'm not going to wait until the battle is over I'm going to stop right now when they get it. Don't fan them. I hope us on them will get on you. 
Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out. being put back together. I'm being built back together. Some, 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 somebody ought to be shouting right where you are right now because you're, you're being put back together. I didn't like being broken. But, but, but I won't stay broken. I'm, I'm going to be back better. God is going to maximize the moment. He's going to maximize my life. This morning. This morning. Amen. We still shout. Our babies coming in. That's all right. They need to see us worshiping. Our babies need to see us shouting. God made it fail. God made it fail. Everything. The devil tried, God made it fail. If there's one this morning, God made it fail. God made it fail. He made it fail. Everything that the devil tried, God made it fail. If there's one. one this morning that, that you don't know Lord and the pardon of your sins. Perhaps you're at the lowest point of your life. And there's no shame in being there. There's no shame in being there because you feel as if your life is broken to pieces. But thank God that if you're broken, you're in the right hands. Because the same thing Jesus did with the fish and five barley loaves with bad bread is the same thing he can do with your life. He can use brokenness to bless others. If you're, if you're here and your life's desire is to be saved, to be baptized, to be born again, you can come. The doors of the church are open. There's room for you at the cross. Come now. Come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. You don't have to wait for another opportunity. You can come today. 
Because maybe, maybe, just maybe you came today trying your best to figure out why, why, why is life like this? Why am I feeling this way? Why did it happen this way? Why do things have to go this way? I, 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 if you be honest, folk around you, they don't know that you almost gave up. You wish you could have thrown in the towel. It got just that hard. You didn't have anybody to talk to. You didn't even feel like anybody would listen. You thought nobody would care. That's what it feels like to be broken. You don't want to get out of bed because nothing feels good anymore. Not, not, nothing can you find joy in anymore. That's what it feels like to be broken. I don't want to be with anybody. I want to be by myself. I just want to be sad. I'm in the depths of depression, trying my best to claw my way back to the sunlight. That's what it feels like to be broken. But as you read today, as you heard today, as you saw today through different witnesses, just like you've been broken, we have too. But God will put you back together again and he can bless broken bread. If you're here, if you're here, why don't you come? Don't, 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 don't wait for another time. Start, start letting them put you back together again, day by day, step by step. There is room at the cross for you. There is room, Lord, at the cross, oh, for you, though millions, Lord, millions have come. There's still room for just one. There, there is room at the cross, my Lord, for you. If not, we leave you in the hands of a just and righteous. God, God bless you and keep you is our prayer. Our babies, amen. Amen. Our babies have a special presentation they'd like to make right now. Please, ma'am, please, sir, be patient with them.
Did everyone receive a gift? Over here. Raise your hand if you did not receive a gift. Amen. Amen. If all minds and hearts are clear, let us stand for our us creed. Let's say it together. As a child of God, I honor God in my giving. I understand his tide is the beginning of it all. Time. Abraham started it. Jacob commanded it. Malachi commanded it. Paul elevated. Jesus complimented. Therefore, as a leading child of God, his tides and all. Offering uh, trays uh, on each wall, on both sides, and in the back. Amen. Now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest ruling by with us hence now and forever. Let us all say without singing, Amen. Amen.